And I tell you what, this is definitely my type of bird photography right here. We got sun, we've got boats, we've got water. I mean, this is. Oops. What's up guys, Jared Lloyd here. I am out on my boat today right now, photographing at a turn colony. You can kind of see it behind me here. It's a little more than a sandbar, but there are thousands of birds that are nesting on this guy right here. But when we approach a situation like this, there's a handful of things that we have to take in consideration in terms of where we're gonna set up and how we're gonna do this. Now, first and foremost, there is the light, obviously. So we have to have the light on our side. And when it comes to photographing birds, and especially birds in flight, Frontal lighting is oftentimes a really good way to go. Now this doesn't mean I always want to set up with frontal lighting. Mammals, for instance, oftentimes work much better when we have some sort of a side lighting or an angled light. But with birds, and especially birds in flight, and the way that their feathers reflect light and color and everything else, this is just a really good place to set up right here. And so you can see how nicely illuminated everything is behind me. Now the second thing that we need to figure out is what is the wind direction. The wind direction out here is so critically important because that's going to dictate where the birds or how the birds take off and it's also going to dictate the pattern in which they fly in and land again and so I want to be able to control as much of this as possible it's a chaotic situation enough as it is with thousands of birds circling and flying in the air and stuff like that and so the more that I could simplify this the more predictable I can make this situation the better on me obviously and the other thing too of course is with the birds taking off and landing into the wind that means that if we set ourselves up appropriately then we get those beautiful Beautiful shots as they bank towards us or they flare out and you get to see all the feathers and stuff like that as opposed to always taking well what basically amounts to be butt shots now the third thing that I want to consider while I'm out here is going to be the background itself now for the most part this is like I said just little more than a sandbar that's behind me right there but the devil's in the details so some part of this sandbar if you will are a little bit higher than others and they're actually covered in some small shrubs and that just kind of obliterates any sort of background so with the birds flying past that area, you just get this kind of solid green with some sky above them. Other parts are very low slung, such as this area directly behind me right now. And so what that means is when I have birds that are flying past me in this situation, I'm able to work with this beautiful thin little strip of sand, a little bit of grass, a little bit of marsh grass sticking up, and then water back behind it again. That creates such a pretty situation. Backgrounds are critically important. In most scenarios with wildlife photography, when I approach this sort of stuff, I'm thinking first and foremost, what is the light? And then second, what is the background? I'm not even considering my subjects just yet. I want to know the light and the background first and foremost. But with birds in flight, we do add in the additional situation of the wind direction. But if we can get the light and the background and the wind to all line up in our favor, then that's where the magic happens. So if you want to learn more about photographing birds in flight, then you're definitely going to want to check out the spring edition of the Photographer's Journal. Now remember, a subscription or a lifetime membership comes with all the back issues that we've ever 